Public transportation. A lot of us love it, cherish it, and some of us found semi-serious YouTube channels based on it. Unfortunately for transit, due to it being run as a public service, it is rarely profitable and needs to be subsidized by the city and country. These subsidies can be quite unreliable, especially in less transit-accepting areas, based on the current political climate of the region. However, transit companies around the world are starting to innovate with economic models, such as the Rail Plus Property Strategy, pioneered in Hong Kong, which can reduce the reliance on government subsidies and make expansion easier. In this video, we'll take a look at the economics of public transport, how it works, and how it's evolving. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Every public transport authority has expenses. After all, providing this essential service isn't free. Thankfully, a lot of transit companies provide financial statements to the general public. And so, in the words of every public transport nerd about to absolutely self-destruct on a first date, let's dive into the 2022 financial statements of New York City's MTA. As expected, the biggest expense was employee salaries, clocking in at $6.578 billion. The MTA website says that it employs 70,000 people, so according to its salary expenses, the MTA spends $93,971 on wages per employee. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that the average MTA employee makes almost six figures, much to the dismay of their Tinder bios. This figure doesn't include taxes and numerous social contributions, like social security. The second largest expense for the MTA is depreciation and amortization, clocking in at $3.361 billion. The sheer amount of assets the MTA owns, such as subway tunnels, subway trains, buses, stations and more depreciate in value every year, and so, the depreciation expense is quite high. It seems that Leonardo DiCaprio's relationships and amortization have quite some things in common. After these, there are numerous smaller expenses, such as employee benefits, fuel, insurance, claims, maintenance, and more additional costs. All of this set back the MTA a grand total of $18.421 billion in 2022. Now that we've seen what public transport authorities spend their money on, let's look at the ways they pay for their expenses. The first revenue source many of us think of are fares. After all, almost everyone pays for their ticket. Transit companies use a metric called the Firebox Recovery Ratio to calculate what percentage of operating costs are covered by fares. For example, Berlin's public transport system has 70%, meaning that fares cover 70% of operating costs. On the other end of the spectrum, there's Houston, Texas, which only covers 6.35% of costs with fares. A few systems reported farebox recovery ratios close to or even over 100%, like the London Underground, which has a ratio of 134%. This can be explained by high ticket costs, London's high density, and by the fact that lots of people use the Underground each day. In contrast, almost no one uses public transport in Houston, due to the long distances, inconvenience, lower population density, and stigma around using public transport in some parts of North America. This leads to transit being seen as a waste of money, which leads to budget cuts, which leads to worse service, which leads to less ridership, and the cycle repeats. That means that Houston public transport is unfortunately a large money pit, only beaten out by every post-Soviet country's construction projects. Fares are not the only way transit authorities pay for their operations. Next up... One income source most transit agencies use is advertising. If you've ever been on public transport, you'd have to be blind not to notice all the advertisements plastered over the vehicle. Busy public transport stations and vehicles guarantee that a lot of people will see the ads, which allows the transit authorities to charge hefty prices. For an example of ad space pricing, I searched the Prague public transport ads and I came across this company called AIPT. AIPT, or Advertising in Public Transport, apparently partners with advertising providers all over the Czech Republic to provide ad space to various clients. Their website suggests that covering one Škoda 15T tram in Prague for six months costs 432,000 Czech crowns, or roughly 17,700 euros. 
there are way more ad spaces for sale, such as AdBoards inside stations, like this one in Petrine, which costs 12,000 crowns or roughly 500 euros per month. There are also banners inside vehicles, like this one inside the metro, which costs 5,000 crowns or roughly 200 euros per month. For the most unique ad space, you can pay to get your message projected on the tunnel walls between the stations of Borislavka and Nadraži Veleslavín on the A-line. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a price for it. Since these prices come from a for-profit middleman company, the public transport companies probably don't get all of the money, but this is the closest I could get. In my opinion, this is a good, non-intrusive way to generate extra income for transit authorities. Most transit systems are unprofitable and have to be subsidized by the city, state and national government. There are numerous ways transit gets subsidized. For an example, we can look back to the financial statement of New York City's MTA. The biggest source of MTA subsidies is the Metropolitan Mass Transportation Operating Assistance Program, which gave the MTA $2.601 billion in 2022. Then, there's the payroll mobility tax, contributing $2.032 billion. After these two, there are numerous smaller taxes and subsidies contributing to the MTA's operations. These three ways of generating extra income are pretty old and have been used for a long time. However, transit operators have been innovating with a new model called the Rail Plus Property Strategy. Let's look at it now. A lot of public transport companies lease space inside their larger stations, like metro or train stations. This can provide additional revenue for the company. However, a few systems have taken this to the next level. This is Hong Kong, the former British colony, now under a special administrative government. And this is its public transport. It consists of the only exclusively double-decker tram system in the world, numerous buses, ferries, and the focus of today's video, the Mass Transit Railway, or MTR. The MTR is the region's metro system, connecting 98 stations with 9 lines across the new territories, Kowloon, Lantau Island, and Hong Kong Island. If we look at its revenues and expenses, we can see that the MTR is profitable. In fact, in 2022, it paid a dividend of 1.31 Hong Kong dollars, or 16 euro cents per share. According to the MTR's website, the Hong Kong government owns 74.54% of the company, meaning that it received 6.07 billion Hong Kong dollars, or 720 million euros from the dividend. If we check the financial statements of the MTR, we can see a field called Property Development Businesses, which makes up a decent portion of its revenue. This is the key to the MTR's profitability, and here's how it works. First, we need to establish one thing. In Hong Kong, almost all land is owned by the government. People and businesses can lease the land for a long time from the government, but ultimately, they can't own it. There is only one exception, which is St. John's Cathedral, which isn't owned by the government. Back to the MTR. So, at first, the MTR leases land from the government at low prices, due to the fact that the land is undeveloped at that time. Then, a line is built to that land and the MTR works with real estate developers to construct apartment buildings, shopping malls and similar buildings around the stations of said line. The MTR often enters profit sharing or joint venture agreements with the real estate developers, ensuring that it collects revenue from lease sales and rents. This means that you can live, shop, hang out and travel, all technically in public transportation property. In 2022, revenues from property development accounted for 10.48 billion Hong Kong dollars or 1.243 billion euros. The Rail Plus property strategy is also good for urban planning, in my opinion. Since the public transport company's properties derive their value from being close to stations, it has a vested interest in building great transit-oriented development. In conclusion, transit companies can use a myriad of different methods to generate revenue and ensure the viability of their operations. Anyway, thank you for watching to the end, you're a real one. Please like the video and subscribe if you like my content and I'll see you next time. Enjoy the bloopers and bye! New financial stage Fuck's sake. The MTA website said <sighs> TA employee makes a <sighs> is depreciation and about <sighs> Can I speak English today? After years <sighs> What? Almost everyone pay <sighs>
Mm. A large money pit, only beating out <laughs> for the 15T tram in Prague for six months. Got <laughs> it consists of the only exclusively double deck. <laughs> Property development accounted for 10. 